Hey guys, did you know that I have a Patreon where you can support me and plus get awesome rewards? Or if you're thinking to yourself, but Julian, I want even more bang for my buck while still supporting you, you can pop over to my Redbubble and check out my awesome store with new designs appearing regularly. But for now, enjoy the video you're about to watch. Hello, hello, she's I, Julian Greystoke. Today I'm wearing my Dread Wolf necklace because we're gonna tear apart a book. That book is called The Great Hunt. I uh, don't remember why I picked this one up. I think it was one that was recommended by a fellow booktuber, and I am usually down to pick up books that I see are being loved by the booktubers that I follow, but I was very disappointed by this. I don't really remember too much about it, so I'm just gonna read you the synopsis from Goodreads because it's gonna do a better job than I am. When a strange beast terrorizes the kingdom of Lachlanen, fear stirs revolt. In an act of desperation, a proclamation is sent to all of Yoruna. Kill the creature and win the ultimate prize, the daughter of King Loxon's hand in marriage. Princess Arity, I think it's Arity, knows her duty to her kingdom but cannot bear the idea of marrying a stranger until a brooding local hunter, Paxton Seabolt, catches her attention. There's no denying the unspoken lure between them or his mysterious resentment. Paxton is not the marrying type, nor does he care much for spoiled royals and their arcane laws. He is determined to keep his focus on the task at hand, ridding the kingdom of the beast. But the princess continues to surprise him, and the perilous secret he's buried begin to surface. So, I mean, that, just the synopsis, reads kind of cringy. Like, I didn't even read the synopsis, I just picked it up on the recommendation. If I'd read the synopsis beforehand, I might have given this a pass, because just reading that, I can kind of tell that it's going to be this sort of overwrought love story with the broody boy and the princess that I am not really into, and surprise, surprise, I wasn't into it, but let's just, let's just talk about it. So first of all, we have several POVs right away that I felt like we did not need. And again, me and POVs, whatever, take it with a grain of salt, but in my quest to find books where I feel like multiple POVs is necessary for the story, I'm finding a lot of books where I feel like multiple POVs is not necessary for the story, and this is one. I'm learning that I am not a fan of getting the point of view of both romantic interests. I like a little bit of mystery. I like getting to know a romantic interest along with a character, and if we have both of them, it kind of ruins that for me. I don't like to be in every single character's head. I don't like to know what every single character is thinking. I like being in the head of the main character and being with them as they wonder about this new person, as they learn about them organically through the story. Now, as you probably gathered from the synopsis, what I thought was going to be more of an adventurous beast-killing story turned out to be mostly just a pretty standard romance. And yeah, the female main character meets the guy, and he's a crabby jerk, and he blatantly stares at her breasts, which she is fully aware of. He just right at her tits. And she's into it. Like, she's not into it for anyone else, but she's like, oh, these guys, you know, they're so thuggish, whatever. But this guy shows up, stares at her boobs, and she's like, oh, oh my, the way he objectified me. She is stupidly into him for no reason. Are we to understand that his, like, maybe he's got really good pheromones or something. Like, she got a whiff of his pheromones and was like, well, we should definitely produce babies because they will be genetically superior. I just... Do not understand her attraction to him. He is a straight up dick who is a jerk to her constantly and stares at her tits, and she just is head over heels immediately. If you hate insta love, do not read this book. We also have a love rival who is equally handsome and he's nice and didn't stare at her tits, so we know he doesn't stand a chance. I don't know what it is, but lately I have been reading, and this is not on purpose, a lot of books that are about a bunch of men competing for some royal lady's hand. Like, I recently finished The Savior's Champion. A while back I did read the first book in that, um, oh, what is that series that's like just The Bachelor? But dystopian. I've already forgotten what it's called. But yeah, what is it? Is this like a thing? Is this a popular trend that I'm just catching on to now? Because I'm starting to realize that I am not into this trend. It comes with this a frustrating cliche of the guy who does not want to marry the princess but is still in the competition to marry her. And I am just 
a thousand percent done with that one. If you are entering a contest to marry a princess, why are we following the one who doesn't want to marry the princess? Yes, of course, it's supposed to be more engaging because he has to learn to love her or whatever. But can't we for once just be following the guy who actually wants to marry the princess? I feel like that would be a little nice every now and then. And something that really, really frustrated me about this story is that people are constantly being injured, but then it doesn't last because they just get magically healed because there's magic in this story. And that ties into the world building. We'll talk about that in a second. But... They're all just getting magically healed, so wounds don't matter, and you guys know how I feel about that. If you're going to injure characters and you just magically heal them constantly, I get frustrated with it. Hurt your characters and make it matter. Don't just hurt them for the tension of the scene and then do away with it. At least not every single time, which is what this book did. Like, if you do it every now and then, fine, whatever, but every single time... No, I hate it. So speaking of world building, I was expecting so much more world building from this. I was hearing things about how like the world building was good. I think that's one of the things that the person who recommended this book said was that they loved the world building and the magic and how it interwove into the world and just it all fell completely flat for me. It felt like there was nothing to it. It was just this classic people with magic are resented by the other people who don't have magic for sort of vague reasons were, I think, meant to assume that at some point in the past magic users went evil and now we hate them all and I just, it was poorly done and it was shallowly done so that the focus could be on the stupid soppy love story between this princess who didn't want to get married until she met a crabby man who mistreats her and stares at her boobs. I did hear that this book was a retelling of a fairy tale and I don't know how well it did. I read a couple reviews that said it didn't do terribly well, so I guess if you're into that fairy tale, which I'm not familiar with at all. This probably is going to be disappointing to you too. But did you read The Great Hunt? What did you think about it? Are you getting sick of these kinds of love stories and you're ready for people to move on from them? Or are, do you think it's just like a bigger trend that's barreling towards us and we better brace for it? If you liked this review, I have a ton of more on my channel. I'm just swimming in content, so go check those out. And if you're looking for the new content, I post new videos on Mondays and Fridays. All the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo for ease of your clicking. And you can support me on Patreon where you will get all kinds of delightful, exclusive content, if I do say so myself. Plus, all of your donations on Patreon go towards getting me better equipment. And I will see all of you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! Hey everybody, it is shout-out time again! Time to shout-out to my patrons, Amanda, Ashley, Celia, Kim, Lisa, Ramona, Savvy Panda, and Sarah. And if you want to be great like these amazing people, then become my patron over on Patreon.